Hey guys, it's Venom coming at you with a build video today. This is a PvP ranged ganker build for the Sork. We're going to start first with the gear sets. As you might expect, Harness Nightmare. 2, 3, and 4 piece is spell critical chance. 5 piece, when you deal critical damage to an enemy, glass shards burst 8 meters around them, dealing physical damage to enemies in the burst and applying the Sundered status effect. This can occur once every 8 seconds, scaling off your higher of your weapon and spell damage. The other set, and it took me a little while to work through all of the set combinations. I was trying to find something to put Tarnished with that would proc really easy, really fast, and be really bursty. And I've kind of slept on this set for a long time, and I was just messing around and come across it, and I was like, whoa, took it out in the Cyrodiil, and I'm highly impressed with this combination. Winterborn. This drops in Maelstrom Arena. You can farm it on normal if you'd like. The two-piece Max Magicka, three-piece Mag Recovery, four-piece Weapon and Spell Damage, the five-piece. When you deal Frost Damage, you summon an Ice Pillar that deals Frost Damage to all enemies in a three-meter radius. The Pillar persists two seconds, reduces the movement speed of all enemies within the radius by 50%. Can occur every six seconds, scaling off the higher of your Weapon and Spell Damage. Again, we are three medium, three light, one heavy. I run all divines on my gear. Now, if you want to switch it up, if you want to, if you need more critical resistance, you want to run in pin or different traits, by all means do so. I mainly survive because of my play style and some of the skills and stuff that I run. And I play at range. But if you like to get in closer and you know if you're taking on more damage, if you want to swap out your traits, go for it. The jewelry, they're all bloodthirsty. Weapon and spell damage, enchantments. And I have Oak and Soul for the other ring. If you want to run two bars, that's fine too. You can get more skills on your guy. But the reason that I like Oak and Soul, it isn't just about heavy attacks. Which, by the way, in power doesn't work against players. But you get a lot of other bonuses built into this ring. Because you're going to be bursting people down with like... Two to three buttons. That's how bursty this com this combo is. It's crazy. So anyway, Oak and Soul, while equipped, you're unable to swap between your two, you know, your two bars. This will give you minor berserk, minor courage, major brutality, major sorcery, major prophecy, major savagery, minor force, minor protection, major resolve, minor mending, minor fortitude, minor intellect, minor endurance, minor heroism, minor slayer, minor aegis, and empower. For the weapon, I've got Winterborn Sharpen Trait, Disease Damage Glyph. For our one piece, we're running a Valken Scoria Heavy Divine's Helmet. This is going to provide you 1487 offensive penetration. Take a look at our character sheet. We got over 35,000 max magicka, over 22,000, almost 23,000 max health. Max stem is almost 14,000. We got over 3,000 health recovery, over 1,400 magicka recovery. Spell damage is 4836. The critical, when we use our dark magic ability, goes up to 41.4, 12.7 spell penetration. We're looking at almost 21,000 spell resistance and about 18.6 physical resistance. Now these numbers here can go up. I like to run these potions here. I want to give you a look at the potions that I'm running. We have the Tristat potions. This is going to give you health, magic, and stamina immediately, and some recoveries. These are your resistance potions. It's going to increase your physical and spell resistance by 5280 for 47.6 seconds. The movability, stealth detection pots. These are very important to have on your guy if you're running into these pesky night blades. And we have some invisibility potions as well with major expedition. Also very useful to have. Typical bar layout. And our attributes are all 64 points in the Max Magica. We have Clockwork Citrus Filet. If you want to run different food, by all means, you can do so. But the Clockwork is going to give you max health, health recovery, 
Max Magicka and Magicka Recovery. These are the buffs. A lot of this is covered underneath the Hell Console ring. And we are running the Lover Mundestone. It's going to give you the 4489 physical and spell penetration. We'll take a look at the skills. Again, I, sometimes I swap some of these out depending on what I'm doing. But this is my basic layout that I run. There is times that I may not run a ward depending on where I'm at and how much damage that I'm taking. If I do sub out a skill, a lot of the times it is my ward. Um, I will a lot of times replace that with crystal weapon or elemental susceptibility, depending on what I'm going up against. But for hardened ward, they've changed the way the ward works. Now, if you don't have a pet and you run hardened ward, it will now give you a heal. If you do run a pet, you want to run the other morph. Um, but hardened ward, this is going to give you your damage shield. If no pets are affected, you also heal. Scales off the higher of your max health or ma magicka, and the shield is capped at 72% of your health. The other skill, this is your execute, mage's wrath. This lasts four seconds. What's really cool about the Sork's execute is you can preload. This is what you should probably start practicing on doing with your guys, preloading your execute. Because a lot of the times, if you've noticed, you get a person down to execute range, and it don't work. You're like, my skill, and they're, they're doing acrobatics, and somehow, even if you're right up on them, and it just won't go off. So I find it, to me, to be more reliable to preload it, and then in that four-second window, try to burst them, and then it will auto-trigger it. So I find that better to kind of preload this. Um, streak, this is going to allow you to move. This is going to put an unblockable stun on people. And it deals damage. Uh, this is mo this is for defense, offense, to be able to stun people, moving around. I mean, it is just awesome to have on. for If you're playing on a Swerk and you're not running Streak, you're missing out. Okay, Crushing Shock. Now, this is what we are using to proc the Winterborn set. You can proc the Winterborn set with an ice staff. And I have ran, ran it. It's it's good. It's fun. I like to run the lightning staff better. Uh, we'll get into some of the passives that the destruction staff gives, and you'll see why the lightning staff is better to run. But if you want to run a different setup, I'll give you an example. If you wanted to run this combination on a night blade, what? Yes. You could put an eye staff on your back bar as a night blade to proc the set. And that would be pretty disgusting. <laughs> or you could run, obviously, your crushing shock. But if you don't want to give up a skill, that's what I'm trying to say. If you don't want to give up a skill slot, you could run an eye staff to proc the winterborn. I just find it better for the crushing shock because one, this deals damage right off the bat. You could run the Lightning Staff, which is going to give you higher damage with direct damage abilities. And that's what all of these are affected by. So that's going to allow your Tarnished Nightmare to hit harder, your Winterborn to hit harder, your Crushing Shock to hit harder, the Impact from your Meteor to hit harder, your Mage's Wrath is going to hit harder. All of those are affected by that. So your Lightning Staff is going to be your best choice. But if you want to swamp it up, that's your choice. You can do that. I'm just giving you options if you want to change it up, make it your own, or whatever. For your heal, Vibrant Shroud. They changed this morph here. Off worth a Daedric Shroud. It heals you and allies and enfeebles the foes in front of you. Your allies in the area are healed and receive minor vitality, increasing healing received and damage shield strength 6% for 10 seconds. Enemies are afflicted with major maim reducing their damage done 10% for 10 seconds. A lot of the times when I'm fighting a player, or especially if I see here comes a ball group, and I know they're all going to be coming in with their bombers and all that stuff, I will lay this down in front of them. Say they're coming out of a resource tower, for example. They're going to walk right through that. They have to come through it. Put it like in a choke point. That's what I'm trying to say. A path that they're going to definitely step in it, try to get to you. And now you've just reduced their damage done by 10%. You know, so that's going to help a lot, a lot for survivability. 
Uh, Ice Comet. This is underneath the Mage's Guild skill line. Call down the, from the constellations to blast the enemy, dealing frost damage to all enemies in the area, knocking them down and stunning them for two seconds. Savvy players in PvP will hold block when, a, when an Ice Comet is coming their way. If you, you catch somebody just right, what you want to do to try to line up your burst combination, that's what I like to do, right? Preload Mage's Wrath. Throw your Ice Comet and then streak at them. Or you can throw down your Ice Comet, throw a Light Attack, weave in your Crushing Shock, and then throw off Mage's Wrath and then hit Streak. It's, you know, it's pretty fun to watch people just get incinerated by this. All right, we are going to take a look at our champion points real quick. For the blue tree, we have Mastered Arms. This is going to increase your damage done with direct damage attacks, total of 6%. Weapon Expert, increase the damage done with light and heavy attacks by a total of 20%. Wrathful Strikes, 205 weapon and spell damage. Untamed Aggression, this is another 150 weapon and spell damage. The Red Tree, Celerity, increase your movement speed 10%. Strategic Reserve, this is going to give you 30 health recovery for every 10 ultimate you have. Fortified, this is 1731 armor. Balanced Vitality, 1400 health. And the Green Tree, Rationer, it's going to give you more time on your food or drink buffs. Liquid Efficiency, you may not Waste the potion if you want to use it, 10% chance. Gifted Rider and Mount Speed, another 10%. And Steed's Blessing, this is a 20% movement speed. All right, let's go back real quick. I need to go down here and tell you about the rest of the stuff. Make sure that you have your passives. All right, underneath the destruction staff, and this is what I was talking about a minute ago. Um, for the lightning staff, heavy attacks damage nearby enemies 100% of the damage done. You're going to ignore 2974, the enemy's spell resistance. Increase your chance to apply status effects 100%, and here we go. Lightning staves, increase the damage done with direct damaged and channeled effects by 12%. And whenever you kill an enemy, you get magic and stuff back. All right. We got passives underneath the light armor, medium, and heavy, because we are running light, medium, and heavy. I do have the passives for the Mage's Guild. The Undaunted passives. Salt and support. If you get a chance, try to level these up if they're not. I am a high elf for the race. <clears throat> you can run basically any race you want, but I find the high elf is going to be able to deal the most DPS for, for a magic character. Um, but again, you could run Khajiit, you could run Dark Elf, whatever you feel like, you know, you're, you're going to be fine. I have a whole bunch of different classes and stuff and races that I play on as well. But I find that the high elf for these kind of builds is going to just perform better. You're going to get more damage out of them. And that is pretty much it. We could look at some of the other skills real quick if you wanted to swap some of the stuff out. Well, susceptibility, this is another skill what I was talking about a minute ago that you could swap out and put on your bar if you like. If you are running into these really, really tanky people, you're going to have to lower the resistances to get through to them. And this is one of the good ways you can do that. Um, another thing about susceptibility a lot of people don't realize is you can actually use this as a spammable attack. It's free. It's a free cast. So this, this actually does deal damage when you cast elemental susceptibility. It'll do it every so many seconds. Every 7.5 seconds, the enemy is afflicted with burning, chilled, and concussion status effects. 
but if you use it as a spammable, it just resets it. So you can actually just keep dealing damage with a free cast ability if you want to do that. I've got some gameplay footage where I was out in Cyrodiil the other day. I'm going to put that here at the end of the video if y'all want to hang out. I'll show you what this story is all about. All right, thank you all for watching, and I'll try to get back to you with another video.